Hey guys, Budcat7 here. Okay, it is Saturday, March 7th, 2020. And I'd like to thank you for visiting the Stonewall Research Channel here on YouTube. I really do appreciate it. Alright guys, well, we're going to continue on in my series looking at the quote-unquote giants or large hominids, as I like to call them. State by state, and next up in the roster is Montana. And Montana has some fascinating accounts. So we're going to go through them here in this video. But right before I get to that, I just want to refer to this Robert Seffer video, which it was premiered today at uh, roughly like 3.30 in the afternoon Eastern Time U.S. here. So I was, li I was in the library while it was premiering, so, you know, I listened to it, and it's very interesting, um, and this is uh, ancient flood myths of Mer Mesoamerica, and Robert Shepard's uh, pretty cool. I, I like his stuff. He never responds to any of my comments or anything, but whatever, man, you know. But um, it's just interesting what he says at the end of this, and I mean, if you're able to read what into it and read between the lines and see what's being said, I mean, you know, he's not saying anything about it, but he just throws our attention to this. But listen to what he says right here at the end. Just Other accounts relate that the current humans are descended from a small number of survivors. In, In some, some accounts, accounts, the survivors transgress against the gods by lighting a fire and consequently are turned into animals. The Tlaxcalan of central Mexico have a legend that tells of men in some parts of the world who had survived the deluge, turning into monkeys, then slowly recovering speech and reason. It's interesting to note that I've never come across a myth that tells of humanity evolving from primates or monkeys, but it is usually the other way around, where some of the survivors either take to the trees and become simian, or are turned into monkeys by gods, or mate and interbreed with an animal, such as a monkey, to repopulate the earth. My name is Robert. All right, so... Just to make it clear here, I mean, it's obviously people didn't turn into monkeys, but what probably happened is that they were turned into cavemen. You see, they were living in an advanced civilization, and then the deluge came, okay, and reduced everybody to caveman status. You see, they didn't turn into monkeys. But, you know, that's the story. I mean, it's come down over centuries, told over and over and over again, and finally, you know, committed to uh, whatever it was about to turn into monkeys. Or, you know, but <clears throat> it seems pretty clear from the evidence of these cataclysms, whatever they were, that seem to coincide the same time as ice ages and whatnot, strangely. But, you know, it's just, if you're able to read between the lines, it's not turning into monkeys and going into trees, but, you know, being reduced to caveman status and, you know, going up onto the mountains for the most part. As that nice uh, Loatian girl there from uh, Laos, the author there, was saying, all these people seem to go to the mountain, and everybody, you know, all the alternative researchers, you know, point to the same sort of occurrence. So, going up to the mountaintop and pyramids being mountains you know you got a nice flat plain there. there's not much mountain action going on while well, you just build yourself a mountain called the pyramid all right so let's get to these fascinating accounts from montana it's just these are so cool man so let's read about them here 
Nine foot six from Helena, Montana. A story to catch summer tourists. From Helena, Montana comes a report of a discovery of the relics of a prehistoric man unless they were only the property of an aboriginal dime museum. A gold hunter, the story runs, struck on a cave where lay a human skeleton measuring 9 feet 6 inches long. The skull was a few inches away from the trunk and between the severed portions were 27 nuggets of gold. From 1 to 10 ounces in weight and strung on a gold wire. Other strings of nuggets of varying shapes and weight were around thigh, arm, and shin bones. Besides this interesting find, there was revealed a great room cut from the solid granite and containing many wonderful things. In view of the difficulty which would attend the shipment of a sea serpent to Montana, this story is a very clever conceit to attract the attention of summer tourists. So, who knows what they were saying about it back then, but this is an awfully big feller there. And what's interesting to me is they found these gold nuggets on a wire, so they were able to you know, a Neil wire, apparently, which would take doing uh, on a flat stone, you know, of any length or whatever. I mean, a lot of uh, very skillful um, craftsmanship in doing something like that. And the gold nuggets are interesting, and, you know, these people obviously knew about the different kinds of metals available to them in their environment. So, that's uh, 1889, late Victorian there. Nine foot skeleton from Montana, a human skeleton measuring almost nine feet in height and according to the robust skeleton and the muscle connections to the bones, must have possessed superhuman strength by today's standards. Okay, so again, I keep on repeating myself with this because, you know, everybody I think has a tendency to overthink these things in some cases, you know, always thinking about how did he move the stone, all these large stones, and it was, you know, a tremendous effort for them to do this, and how could they do it, and they needed hundreds of people, and thousands of people, and blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, if you're nine feet tall, okay, and you had this robust skeleton, which means thicker bones, and he's often reported thicker skulls, thicker bones, and where the muscle connections to the bones, okay, and don't forget, all right, I mean, I was a bodybuilder for a while, okay, I, I, I live with and dated the Guinness Book World Record Strongest Man in the World, estranged wife for a while okay so put it this way you know I was a big boy at one time I knew I know a lot about back in the gym now by the way see what I can do at almost 60 but we'll see muscle memory man so in any case you know what what it is is some people in this world have more muscle fibers than other people and certainly animals comparable animals like chimpanzees for example who have basically a similar skeletal structure yet their muscle tissue is much more densely packed okay so they have more muscle fiber per pound or whatever and they have like super strength of course they don't have the veil either but you know i mean i had to face the guinness book world record strongest man in the world like every other day i mean how many people in this world can say that this guy was a giant in his own right 
and I'm not giving his name, but you know, he's been surpassed in the Guinness Book of World Records, but he's like one of the, one of the early ones there, strongest man in the world there. So, you know, some people's muscle fibers, and who knows what these giants' muscle fibers could have been like. And also, don't forget, I went over this on my channel with biological um, gravity. All right, the cells in, a, in an Earth environment where the gravity would be less intense would enable cells to grow bigger and therefore larger organisms. And this is why the die off of the megafauna and the deterioration of the giants over the millennia the only way they could carry on was by interbreeding and there's plenty of evidence of that so look these you know you wonder how they move big stones well four guys would be moving some huge block of stone that would take you know 50 you know regular homo sapiens of average height and size today to move, let's say, or whatever, okay? So less people to do the work, and what a, a single individual could do would be far up and above what any average person of today could do. So therefore, things could be designed to fit that their proportions, you see, as I referred to on building with stone in a previous video, why do we have brick and construction block that's made of a certain size? Well, it's designed that way, so it's easy to handle by a single individual for this individual task. If things are designed for multiple members to be used in a task, then that's designed proportionately, you see. So, these people, even a single individual could be, uh, do accomplish far more with larger blocks of stone than, uh, you know, any average human being. A female skeleton nearby was only slightly smaller and must have been awesome to behold. Nearby was a skeleton of a dog that was almost the size of a full-grown horse. Well, isn't that interesting? Dogs the size of, you know, this is like domesticated dogs, right? The size of a horse. All right. So we're talking about these people left over from the Pleistocene somewhere on the way down. You know, maybe a few years into the how, you know, into the Holocene, and they're starting to shrink down from 18 and 16 and 14 feet as the gravity starts to affect them. Professor Macus S. Farr, a government educator, and his students from Princeton College excavated these finds in Fish Creek County in Montana. There, the excavated a mound near the creek and found a cache of items, bones, and the evidence of both greater humans, greater animals, and the evidences of an advanced civilization. This is the evidence of an ancient city along with stone implements with embedded gems and animals of great size. So this is uh, 1903, prehistoric relics unearthed in Montana. Very interesting there. Okay, huge <clears throat> humanoid, you know, who knows what the skull must have looked like, but this dog that was the size of a horse. Okay, so we're talking about a whole different world, folks. So these people who were reduced to cavemen, like, you know, just regular, you know, average size homo sapien human beings were around too. But our cells fit to do gravity, no problem, adjusted to it without any ill effects because our cells were appropriately sized and so is every animal in this world now 
but not the dinosaurs and not the megafauna and not any of those animals. They could never bring them back. Their cells were bigger. They can't survive in our gravity. And I went over that in the gravitational biology video that I did. Big Timber Nine Footer. Bones of ancient giants. Wonderful discoveries of fossils are reported from Montana. St. Paul, Minnesota, July 2nd. A special from Big Timber, Montana says, Wonderful discoveries of fossils and bones of prehistoric men and animals are being made in the Fish Creek country by Professor M.S. Farr and party of students from Princeton University. In the remains of a city belonging to the Stone Age, Professor Farr found the bones of animals of immense size and various crude instruments, many of them ornamented with gems. Near the creek was found almost complete the skeleton of a man nine feet high and another skeleton somewhat smaller was found nearby, probably being that of a woman. Bones are believed to belong to a dog the size of a horse were also discovered. So it's just another repeat of the previous article, but you know, these other things were added, like the things, uh, uh, <clears throat> the um, crude instruments, many of them ornamented with gems, you know, they got down to a little finer description of the artifacts and God only knows where they went to and I would love to see that but you know Jimmy and I were talking about it on the radio in WOOL in Bellows Falls Vermont there with Al at Country Lunch we were talking about that you know them using minerals and you know you hear about all these in Montana here with gems and gold etc so all these materials were known to these people and, you know, sort of smacks of uh, pretty high culture. Prehistoric baseball bat and nine-footer. This is kind of a funny one. A prehistoric baseball bat has been found in a Montana cave lying alongside of a nine-foot skeleton. A man nine feet long with a club to match him could reach a ball and send it over the fence in a way that would make his fortune these degenerate days. <laughs> Indianapolis Journal, July 24th, 1889. Well, if you think it was degenerate back then, boy, that guy could only, can't imagine what it is now. I mean, only his ancestors know how degenerate it is now. Way beyond that. <clears throat> King Solomon's Cave, nine, seven and a half, nine foot, seven and a half. That's a big old guy right there. And I bet you that guy could lift up. See, it's always this, you know, you always think about it just like long string being kind of characters, whatever. But they had big bones, too. So this is why they repeatedly report them as being powerful. And, you know, as I report on this channel in another video about some interesting facts about Verrazano when he got here. And he said not only people were taller, but they were larger in size. So, so just bigger people all around, not only taller. You know, they would, they didn't have you know gigantism or whatever it is. These decrepit people who can barely keep themselves up and all. These were stout guys, like I showed you those Fiji chiefs there, and from those Pacific Islands. Those guys look like they could break you in half in a second. You know, they look like the biggest wrestlers and all those kind of guys, you know, huge people, seven foot, seven tall, they look, and thick. King Solomon's Cave, this is an interesting one. Some interesting discoveries have just been made in a cave called King Solomon's Cave, Montana, United States, and an account of them is given by a correspondent of the Deer Lodge Independent who formed one of a party of explorers of the cave in question. After crawling through several narrow passages into, quote, a magnificent chamber, unquote, the attention of the explorers was attracted by a massive shield made of copper, 57 inches in length and 36 inches in width, leaning against the wall. I wonder what it weighed. 
Okay, so here, you know, I've had this argument with somebody when I did the um, one by C.W. Saran where they found this rather large skeleton um, in uh, southwestern United States there, somewhere in New Mexico or Arizona, something like that. And um, these professional archaeologists, husband and wife team, found a skeleton and he had a rather large shield, 36 inches, and... Um, it was encrusted with different minerals and uh, rock and so you know it's just a fantastic thing and it's a rather large shield but you know somebody came back it was like oh the roman shields were larger or whatever you know it's just a totally different design and you know with the rock on it and everything the weight of the shields you know shields can't can only be so heavy you know if they are heavy you know to any extent you know, the person who's wielding it has to be able to lift it to protect themselves in quickly, too. You have to be strong, I would imagine. But what would a shield made of copper, 57 inches in length and 36 inches in width, weigh? Okay, I can only imagine a pretty damn heavy thing. About 10 feet beyond... The shield and eight from the floor was a cavity in the wall. One of the party, by aid of some stones, climbed up to this aperture with a light, but quickly descended in such a state of alarm that he was for some moments unable to explain that in the niche lay a petrified giant. The other explorers immediately climbed up to the aperture and gazed in. There, sure enough, was the monster man, whose dimensions on measurement were found to be 9 feet 7 and a half inches in length, and I would assume 38 inches across the shoulders, which is massive. And it's cut off there. But 1874, Otago Daily Times just amazing there yeah, with this copper shield and this huge guy in there and you know it's just gonna be like you know the, this whole culture never existed this is could even predate the Adena and Hopewell cultures and just they're not going that far back because it doesn't fit their storyline that they're handing us a baloney story about the past and who was who and what was what. Butte skeletons of gigantic stature, not but, Butte, finds bones of giant and great cave. Exploring party makes strange discovery near Butte. Remains of a prehistoric people in underground abode. Theory is advanced that some seismic disturbances closed exits to the cavern and imprisoned the ancients. So here's an interesting article that just smacks of underground city because when you hear about it, you know, it's just replete with rooms and all this kind of stuff. So here we have in the Americas sort of underground city maybe not quite as big as some of those found elsewhere around the world but evidence of their being here and who knows there could be others that you know either we know about they know about don't want to tell us who knows but here's one being reported on back then special bis dispatch to the call and uh the fact that it says it was uh, disturbance to close the exit, some sort of earthquake or something, okay, we would be talking about the cataclysms or the end of the cataclysms. Butte, Montana, December 8th. A new cave that gives promise of developing into the most wonderful of its kind in a known world has been discovered in the mountains 48 miles east of Butte in Jefferson Canyon. Its extent is as yet unknown, though it has been explored for a distance of, get this, 10 miles, okay, and to a depth of about 800 feet. So, pretty substantial there, okay. The entrance to the cave, which is near the track of the Northern Pacific Railway, and about, looks like, 1,400 feet above the bed of the river, 
was discovered a few weeks ago by a hunter and the cave has just been explored by a party headed by J.W. Gilbert, a newspaper writer of Butte. Gilbert returned today after an absence of a week with evidence of his discoveries. Several skeletons were found in one of the many rooms and many articles and utensils of stone and copper were lying about. Some of them might have been brought out, some of them have been brought out. The skeletons are of persons of gigantic stature and the belief of Gilbert is that the cave was the abode of a prehistoric people and that further exploration will bring to light proof of this fact. A theory is that by sudden, a sudden change and disturbance of the earth at the entrance to the ancient home was closed and the inhabitants walled up and left to die. A large river with a fall of a hundred feet at one place is one of the wonders of the cave and a score of apartments some hundreds of feet in extent are decorated with the wondrous formation of nature's of nature one room resembles the interior of a cathedral with gigantic pipe with a gigantic pipe organ the pipes being formed by st stalactites to by nature to give forth beautiful notes of harmony a member of the exploring party by striking the pipes with a stick played a rude imitation of near my god to thee access to the cave is very difficult as a direct descent of i think it says something like 800 feet 400 feet is necessary before any footing can be obtained another party will soon visit the place fully equipped for a to, we'll soon visit the place fully equipped for a thorough investigation. I wonder whatever happened. That is so fascinating. And it sounds like so many of these other places to be found in Europe and uh, by the Black Sea area and other places around the world in South America, all these places, okay? So 10 miles and 800 feet underground, and it wasn't fully explored back then. So whatever happened? And whatever happened to all these artifacts and the bones and everything, just just forgotten about. And nobody nobody went there to take a look. And who knows what happened. Belt Mountain's nine foot six giant in a hole in the ground. The remarkable story of a gold hunter in the Belt Mountains of Montana. So I think this one goes over the one with the nuggets found or whatever, but let's read it anyway here. The remarkable story of a gold hunter, Bell Mountains. Okay. Every, from the St. Paul Pioneer Press, every resident of Montana and many visitors to the famous territory know that the Belt Mountains have always been the seat of mysterious stories and that in their numerous gulches and canyons have been picked up wonderful relics. Among the most curious are agatized human maxillaries and teeth all of gigantic size, so that's very interesting there. Gold in quantities has been found in the Belt Mountains, and rubies, sapphires, and often diamonds are shown as products of one or the other portion of the territory. The Helena correspondent of the Pioneer Press sends a remarkable story accompanied by numerous attesta attestations to its truth. It was told by a gold hunter. He said that while prospecting in the Belt Mountains, he found a peculiar depression in the ground. After excavating, he discovered a mysterious cavern reached by 23 steps. At the foot of the stairs, said he, on one side of the passage lay the skeleton of a man of immense stature. The skeleton measured exactly nine feet six inches in height. The skull lay a few inches from the trunk, and between the two lay twenty-seven nuggets. They were strung on a line uh, on a a fine gold wire and ranged from one ounce to ten in weight around the thigh arm and shin bones were other strings of nuggets none of which weighed more than four ounces there were about 15 pieces of gold in the pile they they were of many different shapes 
None of them weighed over three ounces, and each piece had a hole through the center. On each side of the skull, I found some sort of precious stones. They lay in a tiny golden basket and were evidently worn in the ears. I do not know what name to give them, but I believe they are rubies. Okay, so how interesting is that? And that may be a follow-up on that first article I read to you about this fine with the gold and the gold necklace, etc. But more detail in this article, but it's still fascinating. And all the rubies and gold, and you know, these people just knew about all these precious gems. And I find that very interesting. And those in particular, there's lots of stone out there in uh, Montana that, uh, you know, they have places where you can go to find, you know, all kinds of precious stones <clears throat> all over the place if you know where to go. Petrified giant whose legs are eight feet. Okay, so this guy was really huge. The remains of a petrified giant with legs eight feet long are reported to have been found in Montana, Rock Island Daily Argus. And this is 1891, petrified remains of a giant Shenandoah Herald. Vital Jarcott, who carries mail between Fort McGinnis and Rocky Point in Montana, brings news of the discovery of petrified remains of a giant in the Badlands of Chateau County, a few miles below the mouth of the Muscle Shell River. The discovery was made by Lala Dons, who started off to find a purchaser for his curiosity before Jarcott could get a complete description. The remains were not complete, petrification having only taken place in a portion of the body. While the remainder had followed the course of nature and returned to dust, one leg was eight feet long, the thigh being about four feet. A rib was found which measured two and a half feet. Petrification is no unusual thing in the Badlands of Montana and the Dakotas. Petrified wood is in that state has had frequently been found. The petrified body of an Indian was found in North Dakota about a year ago. St. Louis Republic. Okay, so, you know, they're copying other articles from other papers, sort of, uh, you know syndicating it but very interesting about the petrification of only a portion of the body so conditions have to be just right for petrification and I still say that electricity has something to do with petrification and the recurrent interplanetary electrical discharges created conditions on this planet that were create petrification in more recent time periods than we think. And I think this is the last or little article here, but I thought it was kind of cute. Rushville giant human tracks and giant human tracks are said to exist in the solid rock near Rushville, Montana. So Willing Daily Intelligencer 1894. So this was near that Rushville, Montana, so near some of these areas where some of these fantastic finds of these rather large hill remains and this underground city there uh, and where, of giants. So we're talking about an underground city of giants there in Montana, 10 miles, 11 miles, and 800 feet deep and wasn't fully explored, etc., etc., rooms and apartments and cathedral-type rooms with musical stalactites. I mean, come on, guys. This is like fantasy world, but real. And, you know, just nothing is said about these people who probably lived, you know, at some couple thousand years after the, the Holocene started at the end of the Pleistocene, you know. And then they degraded in size, some of these people, as time went on and the gravity was normalizing to current gravity. So, in any case, guys, I hope you found those accounts in Montana fascinating. I know I did. That copper shield was just 
intense there. And um, this one here with, uh, you know, the large skeletal remains and the um, gold, annealed wire of gold and gold nuggets and rubies and these caverns, just unbelievable stuff in Montana there. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. And I will be doing another one on the Giants real soon. And then we'll get back to whatever in between. There's some more interesting stuff I can dig up. All right. All right, guys. Anyway, Bugcat7 signing out. Peace.